Welcome everyone. Today we have with us a guest, Bhavan Chand from Twitter. If you know of him, this is a fitness influencer. He's lost 25 kilos in a couple of months and he's now a fitness coach. My friend Bhavan, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Harsh. How are you? It's really nice talking to you and thanks for inviting me. All killer, brother. Everything is well. I saw your story on Twitter a couple of days ago about your father, mm -hmm. and that's why mm -hmm. I wanted to speak to you. And I do believe that the work you are doing is very useful for the present generation, especially nowadays okay. where everyone is just eating carbs all the time, getting diabetic at 25, 26. It is completely insane. So tell me, how did you get into fitness? What motivated you to lose weight? And how did you become who you are? Yeah, so my motivation is uh, basically I got fat uh, in 2020. Um, like I'm 30 years old. I'm fat. I was fat. I won out five kgs. And uh, given my background, like my father has diabetes. He died at the age of 51. And my grandfather died at the age of 60 due to diabetes. And most of my relatives from my father's side, not most of them, like everybody has got diabetes. Uh, so coming from that background, I think that if I stay like that, I will die by 50. And I did not like it. So I thought it's a time to change. And I decided to uh, transform myself. And then I started uh, uh, losing weight, uh, started working out, uh, taking care of my diet and everything. And then uh, almost seven to eight months, I lost nearly 23 kgs. And uh, so I want to mention Asia here, Alexander Cortes. Like uh, uh, I trained with most of his programs. And after losing weight, I have been in his uh, inner circle. His inner circle is a group where uh, uh, people talk about making money, uh, getting fit. As a, uh, the, the primary goal of uh, every person over there is to get fit. So I joined that group on my fitness journey, continued like that. And uh, Alexander posted my transformation once on Twitter. Uh, so from there, uh, like he just tagged me on Twitter and I'm almost zero followers uh, at the time. Uh, so he posted my transformation and then uh, within uh, overnight, I got uh, nearly some fine at 600 followers. And uh, I didn't pay much attention to it because I don't know what to do with those followers. Uh, so after that, I uh, uh, started uh, getting a few messages from uh, people like, uh, uh, this is a good transformation. Like, how did you do that? Uh, what did you need? And everything. So then I started posting on Twitter. And uh, almost from 20... 20 end to 2021 end, I was not uh, much serious on Twitter. Like I was just posting my transformation, my workouts, uh, what I'm doing with, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, what I'm doing in the gym and all these things. And uh, from 2021, I started taking Twitter seriously because uh, I like this work. Like people are asking me how to lose fat and uh, I have trained a uh, few people, I have coached few people online for free and in, in 2021 almost. Like people used to come to me and they asked me, what did you do? I mean, like, uh, what to do? Uh, how can we lose that? I used to tell them, uh, write few diet charts and then few programs and then you give a gear, hand, hand, over, hand over them with these programs. And slowly uh, they started getting results. And I thought that uh, this is something what I want to do because uh, I'm creating some change here. Like people want this information from me. And from there onwards, I started uh, posting on Twitter. And, I now have somewhere around 8,000 followers uh, and another 6,000 followers on Instagram. Yeah, uh, that's how I'm here. That is very good. I think I agree with you on the sentiment where this is one of the most fulfilling works you can do. Where exactly. no matter what business you have, how much money you're making, this impacts <laughs> so many people. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure man. Like, um, I have one point. Uh, like, there's a student. Um, uh, he said that I don't have money. I just want to uh, 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 get coached by you. So um, I took him up on within three or four months. He he changed radically. Uh, like I felt very happy seeing him. Uh, and then he started preparing for exams. And 
even now we message me like uh, like uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> it's still i still lean uh, that's what makes me uh, happy seeing all this answer Moreover, think of it like this, Bhavan. Let's say someone was on the way to type two diabetes or type one diabetes, mm. Mm. and they start exercising after looking at your account. And let's say yeah. this person is forty years old, and if they had mm. gotten diabetic, maybe they were a diet at forty, or maybe they were mm. a diet at forty-five, fifty, and mm. their children would have grown up without their father. And now, because of you, all these people can get to live with their families. The kids can have fathers. I think it is exactly. the most meaningful work out there, helping people do better. Do yeah, better. yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, so, pre-diabetic condition is something which can be reversed by workouts and also taking care of your diet. And the best thing as a coach or any coach in the fitness industry can do for diabetic people is uh, finding those uh, pre-diabetic people. Like, if they come to you with pre-diabetes, you can just reverse that and. Uh, Change their life. Uh, it's a it's a very fulfilling one. For those if, for those people who are living under a rock, can you tell them what exactly is diabetes? What is type one diabetes? What is type two diabetes? What is pre diabetes? What are we talking about here? Okay, uh, so type one diabetes is basically uh, so so I will I will just brief it. So diabetes of is of two types: type one and type two. type 1 is basically where your body will not be able to produce insulin so this is not something you get because of uh, lifestyle or your overeating or your, your lack of exercise uh but whereas type 2 diabetes is something which you get through your uh, lifestyle and if you have this hereditary factor where all of your Ancestors are having diabetes, then you are more prone, prone to have uh, type two diabetes. So type two diabetes is basically where um, your body stops reacting to the insulin, and there will be a lot of glucose in your blood, and uh, that's why you can see that uh, blood sugar levels will be high in type two diabetes people. So one is naturally your body stops producing. Uh, 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 insulin that is type one, and the other one is your body stops responding to insulin that is type two diabetes. And pre-diabetic is basically a condition where people are not diabetic yet, but if they continue their lifestyle like that, they will get diabetic. Uh, there is some research that most pre-diabetic uh, pre-diabetic people, uh, somewhere around twenty-five to thirty percent of pre-diabetic people will get diabetic. Within three to five years of getting analyzed, I mean, after getting diagnosed, uh, diagnosed that they are diabetic. Ah, uh, sorry, pre-diabetic. So, if you can find those people and help them uh, from getting into that diabetic zone, then that's a win for both uh, both me as a coach and for that person too. I hundred percent agree. In fact, I have a personal anecdote here because mm -hmm. when I started going to the gym and I started lifting when I was sixteen, before mm -hmm. that, let's say at age of fourteen and fifteen, I'm pretty sure I was diabetic because mm -hmm. I remember when I used to take a piss, a bunch of ants in the area they would come and you know try to drink mm -hmm. from my pee. Basically, it means that I was okay. pissing out glucose, or in the sense that when your blood has a lot of glucose in it, your kidneys yeah. will flush it out and. Yeah. A sign of being pre-diabetic or even being diabetic is when you're urinating. Insects are attracted to your urine because mm -hmm. there's glucose in your urine, and they want the sugar. Yeah. So I had that, and when I started lifting, I started eating cleaner naturally, and it just went away. Oh, that's nice. But this was that, back when I was fourteen years old. I was never mm -hmm. formally diagnosed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, most people uh, go undiagnosed. Uh, Yeah, pre-diabetes, but only they are uh, they will after developing the symptoms, or uh, they will uh, go for a checkup, and then uh, uh, suddenly uh, they are shocked that they are uh, diabetic. But if you are uh, if you are not moving much, if your diet is a mess, and you are uh, totally sedentary, and you are overweight, then there's there are high chances that uh, you can uh, you can uh, get diabetic. But there is also uh there is also a lot of genetic factor here going on like not every overweight people uh, every overweight person is a, uh, is a diabetic or pre diabetic it's not like that um 
I would like to uh, quote what Guru Enrobic said a few days back on Twitter uh, when I posted when I posted my story uh, that uh, the diabetic gene that you have in your body is like a gun and the environment you provide is like a trigger. So if you have that diabetic gene in your body, then and you provide the environment for that, then that's go- uh, that gun is going to get triggered. But if you never provide that environment to that, it's not going to get triggered. So you'll be fine. So environment plays a major role, even if you are, you know, uh, genetically uh, predisposed to getting diabetes. Okay, slight digression in the topic, but someone who mm-hmm. who's already diabetic, what should they do? If someone is already, say, type 2 diabetic, mm-hmm. how can they improve their health? Yeah, uh, so first thing is they have to uh, go to the doctor because uh, prescribing medicines or, you know, changing the medicines is not my scope of, uh, you know, practice. So, but there is a lot of things that can be done from uh, my side, from, you know, uh, changing their diet, putting them on exercise and making lifestyle changes so that they will not revert to uh, the same lifestyle, uh, lifestyle which has uh, made them diabetic. So if somebody comes to me with diabetes, the first thing I will do is make dietary changes, uh, mostly uh, a low-carb diet. Low-carb doesn't mean that you have to give up totally carbs, but whatever carbs that you are taking, if you just lower it a bit, then, then also you will see a lot of change. And the second thing is focusing more on weight loss. Uh, if you focus more on weight loss, even a 10% reduction in your weight, that's going to bring a lot of change in your blood glucose levels. So diet and then losing weight and then working out. Uh, they can lift weights. They can also walk uh, resistance exercise and then this uh, aerobic exercise. Both are proven to uh, manage your blood glucose levels. But I would also prefer people to go for resistance training because once they build up the muscle, that muscle acts as a glucose sink and that will help uh, a lot in managing their uh, blood glucose levels. So resistance training, aerobic activity, diet change, and uh, lose weight. These things, definitely they will, uh, they will, change, uh, uh, they will see a change in their glucose levels. I'm not a health coach or a doctor, but mm-hmm. occasionally someone will ask me, what should I do if I'm diabetic? And my typical answer to them has always been, eat a keto diet for the rest of your life. That's mm-hmm. it. Because the problem is that when you put glucose in your blood, it's not coming out. Mm-hmm. And you have yeah. to inject insulin to get it removed. And that insulin mm-hmm. is hurting you over the long run. Yeah. And the simple solution is to stop putting that glucose in your blood. If, you're, if you can't get it out, stop putting it in. And mm-hmm. the way you don't put insulin in your blood is to either eat a low carb or an ultra low carb diet. I mean, a low carb mm-hmm. diet is going to still put insulin in your blood. Yeah. So exactly. this is why I recommend them 20 grams of net carbs or less, which is typically mm-hmm. a diet of meat, fish, eggs, mm-hmm. things like that, that don't give you that insulin. In the, though you will not have glucose in your blood, so you don't need that insulin that you're not producing or mm-hmm. not reacting to. And your problem exactly. is solved. Yeah. So, uh, so I would like to know how do those people respond when you say shock and so do they really believe that I think that some people at least the, this this isn't people in real life right people in real life do not listen to anybody mm-hmm. they eat what they want and they mm-hmm. don't give a shit like if the doctor tells them eat this eat that they don't care what the doctor says they want to eat potatoes they're going to eat potatoes despite mm-hmm. what is happening to them. But I've noticed that online people seem much more receptive where mm-hmm. yeah. people will actually come and ask you for help. And I do think it is beneficial for them. And some of them have followed it and they're like, okay, so mm-hmm. I'm losing weight. A lot of my issues are gone. So I can corroborate what Bhavan is saying here where he's saying, okay, yeah. eat a low carb diet, mm-hmm. increase your activity levels. And yeah. pretty much you will start losing weight. And a lot of exactly. your whole life issues will be solved. Exactly. Uh, the major problem that I have seen with people in real life, not on Twitter, because Twitter is where people are a bit um, uh, 
like they are receptive to these ideas but when i say in real life that you can change your lifestyle you can change your diet and you can work out and manage your diabetes then people will look at you like i'm some mad person right literally they don't believe that uh, i'm not surprised uh, about this because when i was fat i listened this a lot I mean, like i hear I heard this a lot like people used to uh, treat me as that was some permanent situation like once you get fat you are not coming back to your normal way like that is not possible that's how most people think in real life like once you get fat there is no coming back once you get diabetes there is no coming back it's the same mindset like they just don't believe that making few dietary changes and also making uh, i was walking every day uh, getting into the gym or lifting some weights these can bring a lot of changes in your life they just don't uh, you know that just don't get into their head uh, so this is a major challenge when coming to uh, coming uh, to uh, treat people with diabetes in real life but they are very much happy to take pills take insulin so yeah uh i don't blame doctors uh, when they say uh, when they don't uh, tell people to you know make life changes because people are not ready to uh, i i think so i agree with you there is something called slave morality and master morality and mm-hmm. i will agree i it is my opinion that a lot of people for example if they know something is causing them an issue but the thing that is causing them an issue is also giving them pleasure they mm-hmm. will keep doing it for example exactly. if you tell someone to stop watching porn mm-hmm. they know it's bad for them they know it's shrinking their brain it's hurting them but they will still keep yeah. watching it every day it is yeah. how humans are wired and some people are just not above it so i understand mm-hmm. i do not look down upon these people but these guys are not as they're not on the same level as people who have self control yeah that's definitely Uh, more than self control what i feel that is they don't believe that um like a few days back i had one uh, conversation with one of my colleagues that he was saying that everybody is getting diabetic something is happening in this world i said why do you think that everybody is getting diabetic so his answer was uh, stress that's it i asked him like see i would like to say that i work in a government job and stress levels are not that high like we shouldn't talk about stress actually uh so when people say that stress they just want to you know uh, take the responsibility from them and blame it on some external situation which is not in their control but if they have to accept that uh they can change their diet uh they can walk every day they can lift some weights in the gym they can manage their blood glucose levels then that responsibility is on them and people don't want to take that responsibility agreed my friend so tell me in your coaching business have you noticed that clients are also like this or is it just the general population have you noticed mm-hmm. and this is just my observation that when people mm-hmm. pay you for advice they are much more likely to take it exactly uh, the major problem that i see with my clients is uh, i think is it's almost the same thing with almost every coaches because some of them they are not going to make it right they will just give up in the first month they will stop responding to the messages uh, i message my clients like three to five times uh, uh once they stop responding to my messages like, like just keep uh, you know uh, since i have a uh, uh, a decent client base uh, now but uh, i able to message every month but once it gets you know to hit it then this won't be possible for someone who is managing 100 clients that's not possible the responsibility to contact your coach that's on the client so some people will be like that some people they really put in the work they will get results uh they are uh, they take initiative uh, uh they respond well to the messages uh they clear their doubts so that's a lot of uh, when when i when people ask me a lot of doubt, doubts i don't feel it as i'm getting bored with a lot of messages because that's basically they are making my work easier because they are getting in contact with me they are uh, are clearing their doubts 
uh, taking initiative. That's uh, saving a lot of time for me. But when it comes to the clients with uh, 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 problems like who never respond to your messages, then it's a lot of work on you. Because I'll be sitting here thinking what might have gone wrong with that person. Uh, was a uh, is diet too extreme for him? Uh, do I need to change that diet, or uh, is he undergoing any problem, or what's really going on with him? Like, so this is how uh, I keep thinking. So that's a lot of work from my side. Uh, so yeah, like there are two types of people. Uh, some just put in the effort, uh, uh, get the results. Some just vanish after paying. I don't know why they do that. <laughs> and uh hey as long as you I, get the money right cash the check yeah i mean I, i'm surprised by my client man like uh, he paid me for 3 months uh i sent him all the forms uh he filled them up he sent them back to me i gave him the plan everything and on the next day he stopped responding to my messages i messaged him the first week second week third week he did not message so So I thought, uh, why not message him again in the second month? So I messaged him in the second month. He did not respond. On the third month again, I messaged him. Uh, he did not respond. But after some time, uh, after a few days, uh, uh, so money came into my uh, account from this person. I was wondering, if, uh, is this a message that I uh, that my phone used to send me uh, three months back, or what happened? So I uh, I texted him. Uh, Uh, hey, did you send me any money? Uh, like he said that I want to renew the plan. So, oh, th- that's good. Uh, so, are you starting from tomorrow or not? Uh, why didn't you respond to my message? He said, uh, I got busy. I'm uh, so now I'm ready. I will do it. Oh, okay. So he asked me, do you uh, give me a new plan? I said, no. The previous plan is fine. That we should continue with the same plan. And after two days, again, he did not respond. So I don't know why people do that. like they keep on renewing it i don't know why they do that you know i was giving this advice to a friend of mine who is mm-hmm. a very popular gym trainer here he trains i mean he makes a lot of money with his training because he trains popular people celebrities and everybody mm-hmm. and yes. he had a few he had a group of clients sign up and they paid him mm-hmm. quite a bit of money and they didn't come and mm-hmm. he was just telling me that hey these guys paid me money and they didn't come like should i refund the money or what, what should i do and i told mm-hmm. him just relax they gave you the money cash the check and shut up <laughs> that's my yeah, advice man. to all the businessmen you know when they every time you have a situation where you know you are willing to provide a service you've been paid for it but mm-hmm. the client doesn't want the service well cash the check and relax yeah but there is a lot of uh, thinking that's going on from our end like Okay, that's uh, free money. Uh, should we take it or not? Should we give it back? Like, yeah, I, I do get those <laughs> thoughts, but you know, uh, but my justification is that I have put in the work, I have uh, taken every input from him, I have uh, uh, written the program for him. Uh, it takes me a lot of uh, a day for me to just uh, write a night plan and then make changes according to uh, the person, and then again uh, one more day to write a training training plan. So yeah, um, yeah, I once I uh, in the first month or second month, I used to think like should I refund the money? But after a few months, I thought no, I I just put in the work and I'm not gonna refund that money. Just cash. And uh, yeah, and let me tell you, uh, I have come across very uh, strange people too. Um, uh, like uh, it was uh, it was long back. Um, initial days like one client signed up and he paid me and the same thing he is not responding so i asked him why you are not doing the program like are you going to any make uh, are you going to make any changes from tomorrow to uh, start the program so he told me that he didn't like my document that's it so he don't want to do the program <laughs> because i gave him on a in a google doc and uh, He he did not like the document. Like, okay, man, like, I just can't respond to those messages. I don't know what to say. That's it. People come up with uh, weird excuses, you know, to shift blame on other people and not take responsibility. I'm going to give you and everyone listening a very yeah. important piece of advice. 
always charge in advance this exactly. way when issues like this exactly. happen you get paid otherwise people will exactly. not pay you i've had this issue back when i was a consultant sometimes mm-hmm. the client would ask you you know can we mm-hmm. do this can we incorporate this company or something and mm-hmm. by the end of it they want something completely different and now mm-hmm. because they want something completely different they think that it's okay that you should not get paid for the work you've done or something oh. like that and that's complete mm-hmm. nonsense so the simple rule of life is to charge in advance and to get a exactly. proper engagement letter like this is what we're going to do for you and that's it this is the rule exactly. of life that some people learn after a lot of knocks like me <laughs> but yeah. it's something that you should follow from day one if you can Speaking exactly. of diet, wow. Bhavan, what are mm-hmm. your thoughts on the Indian diets? Since you are Indian and I am also Indian, mm-hmm. I yeah. think a lot of people hate on the Indian diet a lot, especially on mm-hmm. Twitter. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's so bad. I do think that it is very rich in carbs, which is not good. It mm-hmm. was meant for people who are much more active than the average Indian is today, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Indian diets like I like white rice. what we uh, what most people eat uh, at least in south india uh we have got good food the, but the problem is that we are not as active as our grandfather and our grandmother or our forefathers we are not that active because we have got modern means of transportation we got bikes we got cars and uh, uh, everywhere we go uh, we are not walking and we are also sitting in front of the desk so i don't think in this scenario our indian diet is suitable for us and that's what see one thing harsh like if you are eating a lot of carbs uh, to get uh, uh, satiated you have to eat a lot of carbs but if you can replace that carbs with protein then you know uh, the whole diet uh, falls into place uh, when you incorporate protein and we are lacking the protein in our indian diets so that's one thing which we can um, improve and rest everything is fine that's everything is fine like um, if you can incorporate a lot of protein into our diet then i think we'll be good with our diets i think the main issue is that people are eating carbs and not mm-hmm. utilizing those carbs so at the end of the day exactly. those carbs eventually just get turned to fat for example exactly. a friend of mine he works at desk job and i lent mm-hmm. him my smartwatch and you know mm-hmm. what my smartwatch counts the number of steps you walk a day mm-hmm. and the guy was walking 1500 steps a day 1500 steps mm-hmm. a day that's it in his entire day, that was his activity level and this guy is eating that, that's how it would be carbs a day exactly that's just what i'm saying like um, see uh, see like understand what a normal person does he wakes up gets ready to the office goes to the office Uh, either by car, some metro, or by bike. Uh, so once he goes to the office, he sits at the desk for the next eight hours. Maybe he wakes up to have a uh, uh, to have some lunch, and again he goes back to the chair, sits in front of the desk. And once the job is over, he again uh, gets to home to uh, some uh, by car or train, and then he basically he gets tired. And he eats some food, and then again he sleeps. See, there is no, ch- uh, you know, opportunity for you to walk at all. This is how life of most people will be. So, uh, I would like to say one more thing also uh, here. Uh, this neat non-exercise uh, activity, dharma genesis, that plays a major role in whether you will be fat in your old age or. and uh, we say that metabolism is the main uh, driver of you know fat loss and we say that some people they eat a lot of food but still they don't lose uh, uh, they don't gain uh, fat it's all because they move a lot we might not notice but meat plays a major role in burning calories your daily calories that is why we tell people to take 10 kg steps So imagine you are having somewhere around you are burning somewhere around 200 calories uh, per day. So in a month that's almost 6,000 calories. In two months that's 12,000 calories. 
uh, that's a lot of calories and conserve war uh, for a lifetime or you know at least for 2 to 3 years that's a lot of calories and if you are not burning those calories uh, you are accumulating those calories as fat what changes do you suggest your clients make for example i can completely sympathize with people who work 10 12 hours a day not everyone is self employed like us or mm-hmm. not everyone has a lower stress job mm-hmm. what changes do you recommend your clients make because i have a friend whom i was training and mm-hmm. i told her okay so your plan is going to look like this you're going to be eating 1400 calories and you're going to mm-hmm. walk 10000 steps a day and you're going to train four times a week and this is your program and mm-hmm. she her answer was completely legitimate like how do i do this i just don't have time i wake up i go to work i come back i sleep i go to work mm-hmm. what is how do you suggest your clients manage this so one thing that my clients find hard to do is taking the tempt steps that's the easiest part but that's where people uh, struggle a lot because once they come out of the gym they forget about uh, activity or anything that's it uh, they they I mean like i cannot blame them because uh, they uh, they have to earn money and they have to earn their livelihood so uh, the office tensions everything that come to your mind before uh, taking them gets that is the least priority and after all um, after all those meetings and after all those stress from the work you can't expect the person to you know or uh, use will power to take take ten steps so if my clients are failing to take those ten steps i basically do uh, what i do is uh, i just the calories i just a uh, number of calories that's what i can do and make sure that they never miss their workouts at least uh, so i have few clients they only work three days a week uh, and those three days will be three full body workouts and they are done for that week that will be enough for them and adjusting the calories based on their activity levels uh, that's another thing that other people can do so if you can manage those calories based on the activity levels they are doing then you will be fine yes. and once they get time once they you know uh, make time for those 10k steps then we can slowly start incorporating those 10k steps and slowly increasing the calories again but if someone is free and someone is ready to take that effort and do those 10k uh, 10k steps and also uh, remain active throughout the day out of the gym then i will definitely put them on higher calorie and then make them do all those activities because i always feel that uh, eating more and moving more is uh, better for us i agree with you there do you have an estimate of how much how many calories the average indian man burns let's say the average 5 mm-hmm. foot 7 inch 5 foot 10 inch indian guy yeah. living the average corporate life uh, so there's a basic formula for this like uh, if it's, um, like i have been uh, tweeting this on uh, twitter do a lot of time if i if i want you to give us a formula directly like it's body weight into 26 or 27 like your body weight in kgs and the 26 or 27 that will be roughly the amount of calories that you will be burning in a day a sedentary man uh like like the lifestyle which i have mentioned before like waking up getting ready going to the office sitting in front of a desk for 8 hours and then again coming back to the home and then uh, eating something and then sleeping of uh, this person he can eat his body weight uh, sorry uh, he's he expands nearly his body weight in kgs into 26.4 to be exact so you can round it up to 27 so there is a uh, there is a complete uh, you know uh, scientific research behind this uh, formula um i can explain that like see uh, you can take your body weight and uh, uh, say if you are 75 kg Uh, on an average uh, you will burn an, uh, around somewhere around 75 calories if you just sit there like that that's it so if you are 80 calorie 80 kg you will burn 80 calories if, uh, if you just sit there like that so but 24 hours it's your body weight into 24 and then we have to factor in some uh, some more activity levels like normal activity levels uh, so if you are very sedentary 
a live cell which I have mentioned before, then we can multiply it with 1.1. So 24 into 1.1 is roughly 26.4. So round it to 27. So it's approximately your body weight into 27. That's it. That's how many calories most people burn. As you do that, they are not um, staying active out of the gym. This is actually surprisingly accurate. I just multiplied mine and mm -hmm. if... When I was leaner, in the sense when I had less muscle, this was what I was burning. So when I mm -hmm. used to be yeah. much less in, when my muscle mass was very low, or you know, mm -hmm. I would say average Indian muscle mass, mm -hmm. I would burn like 2,050 calories. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly. yeah, pretty much it, like 18 to 26 with 2080. So yeah, this is very accurate. That works, I, man. That works for almost every seventy person. <laughs> Yeah. You know what is crazy is that now that you mention it, 10,000 steps, you say they burn 200. In my opinion, they burn somewhere around 350, 300 calories. Exactly, yeah. Somewhere, somewhere around. Uh, but how easy it is to consume 250 calories. It's I very mean, easy. It's too hard to do that. Exactly. Uh, that's why, uh, that's what, uh, whenever people ask me, uh, what's the best exercise to lose fat, like, there is no best exercise to lose fat. You have to lose fat through your diet. That's it. That's the easiest way to do it. And people don't understand why they do these basic things. Why they, why they do resistance training, why they do cardio, why they take 10k steps. They don't understand. I just want to brief it. Like the resistance training that you do is to build muscle. Our cardio is for your heart health. And uh, the 10k steps is to... Uh, increase your daily energy expenditure and uh, keep you active throughout the day so that you will not be fat in your life further going uh, into your older age. That's why you do these three things. I think most people, when they think of exercise, they think of it as a way to burn calories, not as a way exactly. to burn muscle. And they're wrong because exercise yeah. does not burn that many calories. You go exactly. to the gym, you lift weight, you, you burn like 50 calories. Exactly. So uh, if, you, uh, if, you, if you observe, like when you ask me how many calories some person, 70% burns in a day, I told you that body weight into 27. I did not consider the energy expenditure in the gym because to be frank, that's very less. Like what we burn in the gym, I mean, apart from getting on a treadmill and burning lots of, a lot of calories in the gym, if you are just resistance training, you're not burning that many calories so that you can, um, you know, outrun your uh, bad diet. That's not going to happen, even with the uh, lifting weights. That is why you, uh, you see people uh, like uh, muscular people with pot bellies. Uh, this is the reason. They think they are exercising, uh, so they eat whatever they want, but they're not burning too many calories in the gym or lifting weights. Do you recommend people track their calories? I do recommend. Like... Earlier when you ask me, I, I would tell that will be boring or I never recommended counting calories people before, but now I recommend uh, people to count calories because it's super easy to count calories and it's a sure short way to burn, burn uh, you know, stay on track and sure short way to lose, uh, lose your fat. Like it's easy, man. Like, you can track it, so you can manage it. You can measure it. Uh, you you know where do you go wrong exactly? If not, you, uh, see the reason why I am recommending people to count calories now is because a few months back, almost uh, some six to seven months back, I was trying to lose some fat, and like almost for one month or two months, I did not count calories. I was, I was not losing fat, and I was scratching my head where I was going wrong. The reason is I'm eating a lot of chicken. Like I'm eating one kilo of chicken a day. I'm not Whoa. measuring the food. That's I'm not lot. like <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot. Like uh, like I, I I got used to eating a lot of protein and a lot of chicken uh, last few years. So unconsciously I eat a lot of chicken or a lot of meat. Like if you put one kilo of mutton in front of me, that will be over within like next thirty or forty. I, I will eat, very filling. eat one kilo. Very but I still eat, yeah. but I still eat. I can eat. Like I like <laughs> I once did that, so um, <laughs> I was, uh, I'm telling that. So that's the reason why I'm not losing fat. Like uh, 
Um, so from that day onwards, I just uh, one day I sat and put everything in the chronometer, like where I'm going on, and then the calories. Most of the calories are coming from chicken, but in my mind, I was thinking, yeah, protein is good, chicken is good, so uh, that's fine. Uh, um, we can uh, we can eat uh, uh, whatever quantity you want, but no, you can't do that. And uh, the major problem what people tell with counting calories is that like it gives you an excuse or uh, to uh, you know incorporate some uh, junk food into your diet. That's what people do. But um, people who want to eat junk food are going to eat anyway. So you better measure that and eat if you if you're going to eat rather than you know just eating it. I think counting calories helps you eliminate junk food. At least that was my experience. I started ca- counting calories back when I was 21 years old or something like that. And mm-hmm. back in those days, I used to work quite a bit and I still mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. And I would occasionally eat something something very junky, something like two slices of pizza, three slices of pizza. Mm-hmm. And I used mm-hmm. to think, okay, this is just, you know, one slice, two slices. How many calories could it even have? Mm-hmm. But when you start counting calories, you naturally weigh your food and it turns out that one slice of pizza that i was eating was like 125 grams so i was eating 375 grams of pizza and mm. the amount of calories it has was insane i was eating 8 900 calories and mm. once i saw that number i was like no pizza for harsh anymore <laughs> exactly no i like this is the problem like uh, you you understood that you're eating a lot of calories but uh people think in a different way like um the major uh, the only uh disadvantage that i see with counting calories is that uh, you, uh people would fill that calories with junk food and then they say okay we are in the calorie deficit we are losing weight yeah we will lose weight but um uh, now most food, uh, people are doing it like uh most people will try to eat a uh, clean food but here and there they will go off the track and eat some food uh junk food like an you know, ice cream or something and counting calories give you that estimation that okay now uh, i have eaten one ice cream okay so i have these many calories left so i'm not going to eat another uh, ice cream at least uh, they will think like this and one more uh, realization people usually get after counting calories is that whenever they put in ice cream here they will see that uh, they have less calories left and either their protein intake gets hit or their fat intake gets hit so now to get to the protein calories of uh, uh, the protein they have to increase the calories again so now they can't do it so now they realize that now if i eat junk food i will miss one my protein and fat which is not good for me uh if people can come to this realization then they will again stop uh, eating junk food and I, I, some of my clients do uh, did that like that's why i'm uh, telling that uh, counting calories is good because uh, like i have one uh, one person like uh, he uh, he eats a lot of chocolates um like earlier uh, like what i do with people who come to me is like i don't talk about calories to them because some do, uh, some do like counting calories and don't some don't like counting calories and people who want to count calories they will ask me uh, like how many calories we are taking how much protein we are taking everything so for them i explain everything but for some people they don't want it, uh, all those things so this person initially he never tracked calories uh, but he was eating a lot of chocolates so what i made him do is that i made him count calories and every time he take a chocolate he is um, uh you know uh putting it in a chronometer and after that he realized that he is getting a lot of calories from chocolate and he stopped eating chocolates you know that works for him like there are clients uh, who got benefited from counting calories counting calories is pretty good but you mentioned protein and fat how much protein do you recommend and how much fat Hmm. Uh, the protein recommendations I currently make is somewhere around 1.5 gram to 2 gram per kg body weight. If you want to maximize your muscle building, but you say that uh, I don't want any muscle, I just want to maintain my muscle, then that's 1.2 gram per kg. 
So if you want to build muzzle, 1.5 to 2 gram per kg. If you want to just maintain muzzle, 1.2 gram per kg. And if I get a client who never ate protein in their life, who never tracked protein in their life, I just start those people at 1 gram per kg. And from there, I will start uh, adding more protein to, to their diet. That's how I uh, deal with people. And uh, coming to the fat for hormonal health, 0.8 grams to 1 gram per kg will be enough for, for most people. I don't recommend people going uh, below that. Uh, so 0.8 to 1 gram per kg of fat. And rest of the calories, you can fill it up with carbohydrates. Have you ever noticed that carbohydrate mm. timing is very important? For example, when I eat carbohydrates in the morning, my mm. entire day, I'll just be hungry. You know, I want lunch. I want evening snack. I want dinner. Mm. I want to keep eating. And yeah. if I eat my carbohydrates late in the night or, you know, right before my workout, then I don't have this issue. So I do think that with carbohydrates, the most important thing is to not eat them in the morning. Yeah, I, I do believe that. Uh, I should, like, uh, that's why I uh, program most of my clients or uh, diets to uh, the carbohydrates in the night. Uh, this helps two things. Uh, one thing, most people will feel uh, lethargic. Uh, what do uh, we call it? Postprandial somnolence. That is the let, uh, lethargy and uh, sleepiness that you feel after taking carbs. So most people will feel that. So I don't... I. Don't usually put carbs for people. Uh, I mean, if someone wants to lose weight and they are somewhere around 100 kg or 100 kg, uh, I will make them eat uh, carbs at the end of the day. Uh, this helps in two things. First thing is they will be active throughout the day. Uh, you will not get that laziness and sleepiness from the carbs. And one more thing is um, in the night, they sleep better after taking carbs. And most most of my clients work out in the morning, so those carbs what you take in the night will help you uh, your workouts in the next day. In the morning. So that's how I program carbs uh, to most of my clients. What is your take on fat burners, testosterone boosters? Are all those things necessary <laughs> for people? Personally, I don't uh, believe so, but people keep asking me for some reason. Yeah. I would say that uh, the best fat burner that you can take is caffeine. Uh, this comes as something uh, controversial, but yeah, because caffeine makes you active and it will burn fat. That, that's, uh, that's the only fat burner I've seen uh, which works for people. And there are some creams that you can uh, apply topically. Uh, those work, but if you are a bodybuilder, if you are going for competitions and you have that last, last bit of fat, then you can do all those things. But for normal people, for general population, like I don't recommend any fat burners and they don't need any fat burners to be perfect. I think most people, they're looking for shortcuts where they hmm. want to take a pill and you know the fat disappears, but it's a yeah. process. You have to follow it. At the end of hmm. the day, like Bhavan said, it's the number of calories you've eaten before and you have to pay the price. Exactly. Bhavan, do you still have those days where say suddenly you you have a pang of hunger, you end up eating 4,000 calories that day? Oh man. Um, that, that happens but uh, I don't remember the uh, last time that I uh, did that uh, because these days I mostly, you know, uh, schedule my meals and I have built lifestyle where uh, I don't get into those situations but yeah when I just uh, was just starting out I just I did that that happened to me but I don't remember the last thing that I did between you and me and now on the podcast mm -hmm. I do quite a bit of climbing and I recently had this experience where there was just no food available and I had been climbing for about eight, nine hours and I had mm -hmm. just gotten down from the mountain and mm -hmm. the only food source was when well, it was very dark and there wasn't like a lot of restaurants open in this village. Mm -hmm. There was this food source. It was like a small stall and the guy was cooking up a whole bunch of things. And mm -hmm. before I noticed it, I think I must have eaten 3,500 calories in one meal. 
I was so hungry and the food was really good but with okay. that's the thing with these processed foods you just don't realize exactly. how much you're eating you can just exactly. keep eating and eating and eating and you do not get full and i'm pretty sure i could have eaten more if i hadn't realized that i'm i've eaten mm-hmm. enough mm-hmm. i think that someone who's trying to lose calories or you know lose weight an important thing you need to control is stop eating processed food because i don't know what they do to it but you can keep eating them as much as you want and you will not feel full you could eat three exactly. subway sandwiches three of them and that would be like 1500 calories and you would not be full like you would still want to eat something one and a half hours later <laughs> that that happens so like that's a problem with processed food like uh, you can just keep eating them and after few hours you are again hungry and you want some more that and the cycle goes on like you, you keep eating that um not even just processed food like i remember myself eating uh two to three biryanis a day uh i did that Uh, and uh, biryani is one of the main food that was responsible for uh, my weight gain like i used to uh, have a biryani in the afternoon and then after uh, by 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock i again feel hungry and i used to go have again like it was in 2018 19 uh, that period uh, uh, yeah uh, there, there are few times uh, where i did that too. I think biryani is still healthier than eating all these exactly. fried foods on the street. That, that's But, true. That's true. It's just some rice uh, and a lot of chicken. And I happen to um, weigh some. Uh, the picture is still on my phone. Uh, I weigh the chicken piece that you get from biryani. It's two fifty grams of piece, and there is still more oh. chicken. That, that's that's a lot of chicken. Uh, I mean, like. Uh, like we ask people to eat to stick down some chicken and they will you know come up with a lot of excuses but you put the put that chicken to biryani they happy <laughs> it's about the form right you know exactly. i have a cousin of mine who mm-hmm. a, she can't study in the sense mm-hmm. if you tell her like study this book she will be very fidgety <laughs> moving all the time not paying any mm-hmm. attention and you yeah. ask her to play a video game on my phone okay take take my phone play this game and she yeah. will sit calmly quietly for 3 hours straight playing a game so oh, yeah. that's like that's it like with people right if it's pleasurable they're going to do it i exactly. think exactly a lot of things come down to making sure that what you're doing is both pleasurable and useful mm-hmm. to you because that's the only mm-hmm. way to make sure that it survives long run yeah and this is why i tell people to not eat boiled chicken so whenever i say i eat chicken or whenever i tell people to eat chicken the first thing that comes to their mind is uh, eating boiled chicken and eating chicken breast i tell them like you don't need to eat uh, boiled chicken or you know they will imagine the worst kind of chicken they can eat like you know uh, with the pure boiled chicken that's that tastes really bland with some salt in it that's it and they have to just uh, eat it uh, possibly you don't need to do that you just you, like the best thing for us in india is that like we can make good uh, tasty curries tandoori like we have a lot of kebabs everything and even even at your house you can make and you can make a good chicken curry or just put some little, a little bit of oil and the rest of the ingredients are totally healthy onions you don't get fat by onions and that's it Uh, onions, some ginger, some garlic. That's it. Nothing, nothing more is in that gravy. So that's totally fine. You can eat a lot of chicken curry and still lose fat. I think with these things that involve eating meat, it's very hard mm-hmm. to go wrong. Unless yeah. you're eating a lot of oil or a lot of mm-hmm. carbohydrates, it's difficult to get fat. And I've tried. When mm-hmm. I was bulking. it's very very hard to get bulky on protein you have to binge eat carbohydrates and fat exactly yeah uh, like so i took coaching from a person a uh, few months back and he put me on some 3200 calories man like i couldn't eat those on 3200 calories <laughs> like 
I just can't eat it. Like I'm eating a lot of chicken. I'm eating a lot of carbohydrates. But still, reaching three thousand two hundred calories for me is very hard because um, mostly I was fat and I, I and I was losing fat. So I'm not used to eating a lot of food uh, as part of my diet. So yeah, eating a lot of calories just from protein is very hard. And protein and that, that, yeah, healthy fat Therefore, is hard to eat. It is it is exactly. definitely difficult to eat. Exactly. Exactly. you have to uh, just uh, just like i uh, have said a uh, few minutes back that you have to get used to eating it like i have been eating chicken from the last few years continuously so now i can eat a uh, 1 kg of chicken but when you give me 1 kg of chicken initially no way i mean like i uh, i would run in another direction i'm not going to do that 1 kg of chicken. no way i think 1 kg of chicken is a uh... Little overkill, you know. It's like two fifty two fifty pro- grams protein. How much is it? Three hundred maybe. Oh, a lot of uh, like yeah, almost two fifty to three hundred in one go. Yeah, depending on the cut, it's a lot of protein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot. That's of insane. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I was not protein. eating it. I was not eating it for protein. I was just eating because uh, like I'm feeling hungry. I'm not taking carbs, so. Uh, I just I just uh, <laughs> got used to it and I started eating it. So uh, the one after uh, after some time, some thirty to forty minutes, uh, the whole curry is over. And like my whole family was looking at me like, "What did you do?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, one kilo of chicken a day is gonna make you jack, yeah. big yeah. and jack. Yeah, that's too, that, that's too much. That's too much of chicken. Oh, if you are really working out, if you are really working out and spending a lot of time uh, in say, doing some MMA or something, yeah, maybe then that diet will work for you. So, a kilo of chicken is bodybuilder <laughs> level stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right, Bhavan. Where can people find you? What is the best place to look for? And how can people hire you as their coach? Oh uh, yeah, Harsh. Uh, people can find me on Twitter at Bhavan Chen, B H A B A N C H E N D. My DMs are always open. You can they can ask me any doubt. They can message me. I almost uh, reply to all my messages, except a uh, few copyright uh, copyrighting messages. I almost uh, uh, you know reply to the messages. So if you have any doubt, you can ping me on Twitter. And I'm also on Instagram at Bhavan Chen underscore B H A V A N C H E N D underscore. Um, people can contact me over there also, and I'm really happy to help them. And if you really want to hire me as a coach, you can message me on Twitter or Instagram, and I will guide you through the whole process. We can talk on phone, and then if you are interested, you can proceed with the uh, coaching. Sounds good. The links to Bhavan's YouTube, TikTok. No, sorry. Do you have a YouTube Instagram. and TikTok? Account? No, man. No, not right now. I don't have. It. I'm on TikTok. Instagram and Twitter. That's it. TikTok is such an easy way to make money. I'm surprised. Yeah, I, 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 I should. I should just start it. I just start it. Yeah, make an account. So yeah, I'll sure. link I Bhavan's. Twitter, Instagram, and if he makes a TikTok or whatever else accounts in the description of this podcast or video, wherever you're watching, and leave us a comment, give us a like. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and we'll get back to you. Have a good day, and thank you for listening. See ya. Thank you, Harsh. Thanks a lot.